Okay, let's do this. Um, my vision is 2080, and that's because of the dry eye um, graft versus host in 2011. I got a stem cell transplant, and as a result, the new blood attacked my uh, tear ducts and saliva glands in my stomach. So the the scar tissue damage is still there. The um, graft versus host, it's been eight years, so it's kind of re relaxed. Every once in a while when I get sick, it gets active. So this eye is kind of swollen, and that's what's causing the blurriness. Um, and then this eye has cataracts. So I'm going to take part of a study. Um, eight week study where they're going to give me medicine for my eye to help promote uh, my tear production and to help the tears last longer in my vision um, because the windy days, smoky rooms and all that stuff affects my eyes so I have goggles um, these are kind of cool um, but strange but it does protect from the wind damage I have these, these are standard to clear goggles. Um, these are a lot better because they're not pushing it on the eyes itself. Um, and then for the vision, due to the cataracts being on this eye more severe, I got these magnifiers here that I used. Um, let the airplane go by. I put on my vision. So right now I've been cleaning my eye with wet damp cloth because the tear artificial tears that I use um, kind of drip and stuff like that and it gets the glasses all fogged up. So that's what, you know all the stuff that I've been trying to do. And then I went not and I bought these magnifier cool thingies that because I do a lot of computer work, I was getting worse and worse, so I started using these. Unfortunately, these magnifiers work both ways. So the glare from the computer was amplified into my eyes, which made my eye condition worse over the last... Um, I had these a year ago, so I've been using them for a year. It's gotten me by, but then the eyes gotten worse. Um, a lot of infections and stuff like that. So um, a lot of these... Um, prescription bifocals um, so taking part of this study is interesting because I asked that the medication they're gonna give me um, if it does work what happens when I'm done well it's gonna be a while because it it could be two years before the medicine is actually approved and actually made available to the public whether it be you know, generic or whatever brand. So they're they're working on it. So I'm kind of like experimental. <sighs> kind of don't want to do it. I've been doing a lot of experimental things. I did the CAR T in 2015. It kind of worked um, wonders for me. And then it became approved after I did it. So I kind of have a choice to help others who are possibly going to be in the situation that I'm in with severe dry eyes and cataracts and and not being able to focus on the computers at home. So hopefully it's medication for them in three years down the road. Uh, I'm doing it for them. Um, I don't know them. I don't know who they are, but if it happens to me, it's going to happen to somebody else. Um, it, it happens. Severe dry eye doesn't happen just to the people who have mental cell lymphoma, cancer, um, it doesn't happen to transplant patients, stem cell transplant patients. Um, it happens to other people too. So um, hopefully this, you know, since I'm a candidate, you know, I'm pretty effed up and this is hopefully going to help me. So um, Cambrin study, I believe, um, I'm going to go to Stanford tomorrow and um, sign the waiver that I do want to take part of this study. And once again, you know, I'm, I'm kind of happy that um, I get to help. You know, it's it 
it might not it might be an inconvenience for me that if it does help and then it gets taken away for a little while then after that I'm gonna have to get um, contact lenses that help and then cataract surgery and then they gotta seal another tear duct um, because it opened up after they sealed it once before so they sealed this one this one this one and this one and this one opened up so um, cool tool I thought it was an awesome nifty idea you know for my problem you know I came up with a solution to keep on working and keep on um, having that insurance to help pay for all my medical expenses and you know still being able to contribute and do my job uh, the best of my abilities and then it kind of you know being derailed without vision is how does a blind guy look at a computer I don't know um, it, it's uh, maybe speak into it and it speaks back to you I don't know how to do that. Everything I do is pretty much in Excel and analytical type stuff and running um, reports and queries. And um, right now I'm in the process of hurrying up and trying to teach others um, everything. So in case I do all of a sudden not able to work or see or go on disability because of that, you know, temporarily. I don't know, um, but the good thing is, is hopefully it works out. Um, you know, the good thing is that there's a plan, it's an opportunity, um, and I'm thankful that I don't need my eyes and my vision to breathe. <laughs> I don't need them to smile, you know. Um, I can get a C and I dog, so, you know, that's a good thing. I need a service dog, therapy dog, anyhow. I'm dealing with a lot of um, emotional roller coasters, um, highs and lows. Um, so maybe, you know, it's all for the best, you know, it, everything happens for a reason. So, um, losing my vision, it, it gives me another reason to get a service dog, therapy dog, and maybe that'll help with my, um, uh, state of mind and emotions and, and, uh, roller coasters. And, and that's it. Um, Feels good to breathe. It's a nice day. Blue skies. So, there's a lot of things that people that don't have a vision can still do. I don't know um, whether it's it's gonna. If I need to do that, I'm prepared to do whatever it takes. Even if it's like this, I'm a good guesser anyhow. <laughs> Peace. Keep on smiling.